Over to uh, Brad Bailey, who's going to do the uh, student lightning round presentation. Please do stay for that. Uh, these are always a lot of fun. Thank you all. And uh, as Bill did point out, we are between you and lunch, so these lightning round talks will be lightning fast. Uh, for those of you, for actually, while I'm introducing the session, could uh, the speakers for this upcoming session please come over here and stand up here, stage right. And uh, I believe everybody, most people have been to forums before. These are some of the more popular sessions that we have where we allow for students to come up and present their posters in a 1.5 minute session, or 1.5 minute lightning round talk that has no no visuals and no questions asked. If you do have questions of them, I encourage you to go visit their posters and, uh, and inquire after them there. They have 1.5 minutes and I will wave my hand at you in about 15 seconds left so you can wrap it up. And uh, with that, I think we'll go ahead and get started with Rachel. Uh, hi, my name is Rachel Maxwell. I am a second year graduate student at the University of California, Santa Cruz, working with Professor Ian Garrick Bethel. Um, we focus on planetary magnetism. Today, I'll, or, or at my poster, I'll specifically be talking about a, a couple different methods of how we determine planetary magnetization direction and what the constraints and uncertainties associated with those are. Um, Spoiler alert, spoiler alert, it's different for different directions, which we don't entirely understand, but uh, that poster is poster number 32. Um, if you're interested in stopping by, thank you for staying. And if it helps remember what it is that I'm doing, think Maxwell's equations, so thank you. <laughs> How you guys doing? Uh, my name is Alex Sandoval. And I'm Arun Kumar. And we're from the uh, University of Colorado Boulder. Um, we're both engineering students um, with focus on the uh, aerospace community. Um, and so our kind of focus is um, tying together the sort of lunar uh, far side focus um, and exploration mission and science missions there. Um, and so we're trying to um, complete this uh, telerobotic sort of operation um, and, and conduct research in that area. Um, and in doing so, we're using a, a commercial off-the-shelf uh, robotic arm uh, and, and rover to do so. So as Alex touched on, um, we're interested in this research because the lunar far side holds uh, significant scientific promise in the field of radio astronomy. We hope our research advances us um, to take a step forward in the, in the process of deploying and assembling radio telescopes on the lunar far side. So again, come visit our poster. If you have any questions, we'd love to talk to you. We're poster 41. We also brought our rover Arlo along with us to give you a demonstration. Thank you. Yep. Hello, everyone. I'm Pija Dhar, and I'm from University of Central Florida. Um, uh, my poster is about space weathering effect on model regolith system. So the uh, approach of the study is to uh, find out the uh, space weathering effect on model regolith uh, by characterizing and generation of aluminosilicate film. And um, we are particularly, particularly concentrating on uh, solar wind impact on model regolith. So we will use uh, surface science techniques to generate the aluminosilicate film and we will uh, have better and good idea about the aluminosilicate film and the radiation impact on model model regolith of aluminosilicate. Uh, so, um, so that we will have um, a great potential and great resource of uh, research for surface uh, future surface exploration. And uh, my poster number is six. So, if you have more question and interest about my poster. Please come to my poster and uh, we, we can discuss more. And I will be available today and tomorrow from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. Thank you. All right, 
Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Michael Walker, and I'm a graduate student from the University of Colorado, Bo Colorado Boulder uh, Computer Science Department. Um, and my research focuses on mediating human-robot interaction with uh, virtual reality and augmented reality technology. Um, and this can take the form um, in the augmented reality case of displaying uh, or communicating information that's inherently hidden, such as robot status, state, um, or intent, um, as well as new and novel interfaces um, for robot teleoperation, showing virtual imagery alongside the robot in uh, its own contextual environment. Um, on the virtual reality side, uh, we're looking at creating uh, rover simulators uh, for rapid ro uh, uh, design prototyping and interface prototyping. Uh, and I should be giving a talk later today about this. If anyone is interested, um, please come. Um, and thank you for having me here, and I look forward to meeting a lot of you. Um, thank you. Hello, I'm Macy Sanford from the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Um, I work in the Raman Spectroscopy Lab there uh, with Dr. Shiv Sharma and Dr. Anupam Misra, as well as a little bit of work with um, Paul Lucy. So my poster um, for this conference has a bit to do with putting a remote Raman system on the moon. Um, just kind of a new concept idea. We're able to, we've made a system that can detect minerals at over 100 meters. So it would be very applicable for the next lunar lander mission or something of the sort. I'm also at doing some work at JPL this summer with um, global imaging spectroscopy. So I'm uh, working to implement a cloud onboard remote sensing cloud screening tool. So thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Alexander Kling. I go to Stony Brook University where I'm a rising junior studying geology with a specific interest in planetary geology. Uh, there I work with Tim Glotch and the RISE team doing mainly laboratory spectroscopy in support of remote sensing missions. And so for my poster t uh, for the conference, I'm looking at the temperature dependence of visible to near infrared spectral uh, spectra and how they, uh, of pure silicate minerals and how they might change with that and whether, um, whether spectral libraries need to be adjusted for future missions for that. So I am poster 27. Uh, once again, I'm Alexander Kling. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Zach Olivetti. I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Colorado Dust Accelerator, and I study dust impacts into ice surfaces. Uh, and this is important for long-term chemical evolution of ice surfaces. Um, in particular, one of the really interesting results that we got was we showed that CO2 that's embedded in water ice can actually be converted into CO, a volatile. And this is important, say, for uh, various estimates about the age of Saturn rings or other things. We're also looking at the creation of much more complex organic chemistry this, through this type of impact. Um, this research is also important for uh, time of flight mass spec instruments such as SUDA on the upcoming Europa Clipper mission. I'm sure we're all very interested about finding organics on Europa. My research is there to help us make sure that when we get those results, we'll interpret them correctly. Uh, so that's going to be poster 17. I'll be there today and tomorrow at the post conference uh, poster session. I'm also the head organizer for LungaradCon, so if you have any questions about that, feel free to stop by and ask about it. Thanks. I'm Alessandra Springman. Most of you know me as Sandy. I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Arizona working on asteroid and comet topics uh, and studying them with radar. I have a talk on Thursday afternoon. It's the second to last talk of the conference, so maybe I'll see a few of you there. Um, discussing uh, the coma environment of Comet 45P as observed by Arecibo, Arecibo radar and what that tells you us about the size of particles in the coma of this comet and whether the radar observations can be connected to other wavelengths. Spoiler alert, they can. And also the preparations for observing Comet Vertinan this fall. Uh, comet Vertinan, all these comet, the Comet Vertinan 45P and whether the comet are all coming within uh, 60 lunar different distances of the Earth in a period of two or three years. After Comet Vertinen this fall, we don't expect any similar comet close approaches until 2038 or beyond. So this is the last chance to characterize Jupiter family comets at close range. Vertinen was the original target for the Rosetta mission, so this is important should we want to be visiting near-Earth comets and understanding what they're like. Thank you so much. And I'm also a co-organizer of LoonGradCon with Zach, so you can come talk to me as well.
Can we give all of our lightning round speakers one more hand, please?